The first wave of series, slated to debut on the Disney Plus streaming service, promised a return of fan favorites and big screen staples, bringing some MCU adventure straight to your living room. But one show in particular is set apart by an air of mystery and a strange title. What if? For quite some time now, we've all been asking two important questions – what if and when. Well, we definitely know the answer to the latter. On July 8, 2021, Marvel dropped the first official trailer for their new series and promised that the show would start streaming on August 11th. For those without their calendars nearby, that's a Wednesday, a tradition that was started with the first episode of Loki back in June. And taking a cue from the God of Mischief, all Disney Plus MCU series will air on Wednesday going forward. As for how many episodes we can expect, in 2019, ComicBook.com reported that Kevin Feige said we're getting 10 episodes for Season 1, so prepare yourself for the 10-episode series to kick off on August 11th. I want it! Come on, give me it. Give me it. Give me it. Come on, give me it. At the D23 Expo in 2019, Brian Andrews was announced as a director of What If. You may not have heard of him, but he's someone with an impressive MCU history. Andrews worked in the art department drawing storyboards for Ant-Man, Doctor Strange, and Avengers Endgame. What If will mark his first directing credit in 20 years, since directing the animated series Jackie Chan Adventures in 2001. Andrews is widely known for his work on Samurai Jack, which earned him two Emmys for Outstanding Individual Achievement in Animation in 2005 and 2017. AC Bradley serves as the lead writer on What If and has a relatively short resume in the business. Bradley wrote one episode of Arrow in 2014, in addition to 23 episodes of Netflix's Trollhunters, Tales of Arcadia, and 26 episodes of Three Below, Tales of Arcadia. As is normal with any MCU project, Kevin Feige serves as an executive producer. Additionally, Laura Cartman was tapped to create the score for the What If episodes. The composer has worked on the critically acclaimed HBO series Lovecraft Country. Something MCU fans were delighted to hear when What If was announced was the confirmation that almost every actor we know and love from the universe would be voicing the characters they portray on screen. Sadly, that doesn't include Robert Downey Jr., who will not be returning, with someone else voicing Tony Stark instead. And at the time of this video, Benedict Cumberbatch, Chris Evans, and Scarlett Johansson aren't confirmed in the series to voice their characters of Doctor Strange, Steve Rogers, and Black Widow, even though we know those characters are returning in some form or another. At the same time, rumors suggest there will be an exciting story surrounding Natasha Romanoff. Who ends up voicing these characters will be quite the surprise when their respective episodes air. One of the first big reveals that came with the What If official announcement at SDCC 2019 was the identity of the series' narrator. For 10 episodes, Westworld star Jeffrey Wright will lend his voice to the series as Uatu, the Watcher. We got our first look at Uatu, who's a mysterious, bold being who resembles a man, in the Disney Plus featurette Expanding the Universe. We know from the comics that Uatu is a part of an ancient race known as the Watchers, who simply observe all events throughout history. First appearing in 1963's Fantastic Four issue 13, the Watchers' goal was to help less evolved species since they were so technically advanced. After sharing nuclear technology with the people of another planet, the population decimated themselves, prompting the Watchers to never intervene with civilizations again. Wright, known for his smooth voice, will voice Uatu as he watches over these what could have been events on Earth that involve many of our favorite heroes. The What If comics have been around since the 70s, with the first issue kicking off in 1977. What If Issue 1 had the subtitle What If Spider-Man Had Joined the Fantastic Four and started a successful run of alternate storylines with famous characters. The volumes are also narrated by Uatu, who at the beginning of the issue details canonical events readers are familiar with and then introduces a What If moment that changes the story entirely. The rest of the issue follows that new alternate story, as Uatu continues to narrate what never was. The upcoming television show looks to be using the basic concept of the comic series with the added twists of an MCU focus. Expect to see familiar moments from your favorite Marvel movies twisted by one important change. Season 1 of What If will consist of 10 episodes, which doesn't seem like enough room to explore all the possibilities inherent in the premise. Unsurprisingly, a second season has already been confirmed. In a 2019 interview with BuzzFeed Brazil, Kevin Feige confirmed that the What If series would go beyond 10 episodes, and he's very excited at what the studio has put together. I'm very happy that we're doing a What If series for Disney Plus right now, and I've seen most of them. We have 10 for Season 1. We're already working on the next 10 
planned for season two. This is the first MCU Disney Plus series to confirm a second season, and it seems like the show could go even further past that. As the MCU evolves and more characters are introduced to us on the big screen, it opens the door to even more what-if comic storylines the studio can draw from. Here's one thing that we know 100% right out of the gate. Episode 1 will follow Peggy Carter, voiced by Hayley Atwell. Feige also told BuzzFeed Brazil, We've revealed one that is very exciting. We've talked about it for years, which is the one where Peggy Carter gets a super soldier serum and becomes Captain Carter. That's the very first episode, and I'm excited for people to see that. I'm excited to see the finished version of that, and I'm excited for the world to see it. Also detailed in the What If trailers is a battle between two Doctor Strangers. This particular episode will follow what would have happened if there was an evil sorcerer supreme. But we expect the plot to have a much more precise point of divergence, which causes the shift in the story. We suspect this particular episode will pull partly from What If Volume 1 Issue 18, where Doctor Strange becomes a disciple of Dormammu. Released in 1979, the comic follows an arrogant Stephen Strange whose hands are healed by Baron Mordo through Black magic. Mordo works for the interdimensional being as his follower, and he introduces Strange to the baddie. The story takes Doctor Strange through a long journey through self-discovery, which he finds much quicker in the character's introductory MCU film. Before his untimely death in 2020, Chadwick Boseman participated in What If by lending his voice to T'Challa. There are a few glimpses of the Wakandan in the trailer for the series, and it looks like this retelling will imagine what would happen if the Ravagers from Guardians of the Galaxy kidnapped T'Challa from Earth and not Peter Quill. Instead of becoming Black Panther, T'Challa would take on the role of Star-Lord, eventually leading the Ravagers, according to Illuminati. Who? Star-Lord, man. Legendary outlaw? This won't be the only appearance of T'Challa in What If, however. Kevin Feige revealed to Emmy Magazine that Bozeman came into the studio and recorded his voice for four different episodes, so we can expect multiple MCU heroes to pop up more than once in the animated series. We're also going to be getting a zombified version of Steve Rogers, according to released footage. Taking down this Captain America terror will be his best buddy Bucky Barnes, whose mission is to prevent the spread of this zombie virus. It should be noted that there are no zombie storylines in the What If comics, but the undead did have a run on the Marvel pages in 2005. Marvel Zombies Volume 1 was a limited series that saw the entire superhero population zombified, and they subsequently ate the entire human race. There have since been other volumes and spins on the five story series, all equally as gruesome. While there is no apparent connection between Zombie Cap and Living Bucky, it'll be exciting to see how this story plays out on What If, and what event this deviated from in the duo's history. T'Challa won't be the only nod to Wakanda in What If. In the series' official trailer, we witness a young Killmonger save Tony Stark from the missile that blows up in the original Iron Man. We then watch as Killmonger rides on a rhino and seemingly fights in a war for Wakanda. However, this time it appears that Killmonger will be the rightful heir to the throne. According to Screen Rant, a toy leak has revealed a Funko Pop figure that displays the Black Panther villain as King of Wakanda. But it's not just his new title that's shocking. He's holding a blade in one hand and a severed head of what's suspected to be Ultron in the other. We can't wait to see how this one plays out, and what scenario could have caused an instance where Killmonger and Ultron came face to face. In the MCU, Avengers Age of Ultron and Black Panther are set a year apart, with a vengeful AI getting destroyed before we took a trip to Wakanda. Killmonger was obviously around at the time of Ultron's creation, just a bit younger, and it seems likely that he sought out the AI once he learned of its creation by Tony Stark and Bruce Banner. If he is a force for good and a strong king of Wakanda remains to be seen, but it would be a nice twist to see him as a hero and not a villain. The series' official trailer delivered all sorts of superhero goodness, and while we aren't exactly sure where the series is headed, we're definitely excited to find out. For example, at one point we see Thor fighting off Ultron's legions, in Las Vegas of all places. We're assuming this might be connected to some interesting merch details that were leaked in April 2021. According to CBR, there's evidently an official t-shirt and hat that both bear the image of Party Thor. While there are more than a handful of Thor stories from the What If comics, nothing seems to fall in line with whoever the heck Party Thor is. No matter what this story is about, it's going to be a riot. The trailer also shows us a young Shuri in action, Spider-Man arriving on the scene, Ego the Living Planet giving us a villainous grin, and the return of Howard the Duck. Gross. 
On top of all that, it appears that Clint Barton has somehow received a heavy dose of gamma radiation as it appears Hawkeye is turning into the Hulk. It also looks like Loki is leading an army of Asgardians against Earth. And perhaps most interestingly, there's a shot of Thor, Black Panther, Star-Lord, and Gamora holding Thanos' double-bladed sword, striking an Avenger-style pose in the middle of a desolated city. As for Thanos' favorite daughter, we've definitely heard some interesting theories about her character. According to the Illuminati, Gamora's storyline may follow her as she tracks down her new enemy, Tony Stark. This plot point hasn't been confirmed yet, but if that does indeed pan out, that would be a fascinating twist. Last but not least, as we previously mentioned, Natasha Rose Romanoff is showing up in the series, alongside some version of the Hulk. And according to another Illuminati report, this episode will allegedly see Black Widow as one of the only survivors after Ultron successfully destroyed Earth in 2015. No matter how crazy these stories seem, What If is going to be one of the most unique MCU properties to date. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite MCU projects are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.